Hello, welcome to service this evening. I'm so happy, I'm so elated that you're able to join us for service this evening. How have you been? How are things working out for you? Welcome to a new month, the eighth month, the month of new beginnings. When God recreated the world, which was another beginning for the world, because life existed here on earth, before Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. So it was a new beginning. God put some things to work to create a new beginning. And I'm going to show you that today. Oh, I'm so excited about it. Hallelujah. He put some principles to work to create a new beginning. If you put those principles to work, this new beginning, this refreshment, <laughs> this reinstallation, <laughs> this rebranding in this year 2022 will be awesome. If you put these principles that God put to work in the recreation of the earth, that means the next five months of this year, August, September, October, November, and December, will be your most fruitful month. <laughs> you will change the course of your life that you don't like and change it to a different path. You can switch lanes. Oh, glory be to God. For those of you that drive, when you're on the highway and probably the cars on the lane where you are are not moving at the speed that you desire. They're not moving at the speed that you want to. What do you do? You switch lanes. <laughs> now, they have um, technology, car technology have advanced so much that I hear there are some cars like the Teslas of this world that when you put it on auto drive, it can switch lanes on its own. That means the car will drive itself and he notices that the car in front of him is not moving at the same speed that you have programmed it to move at to switch lanes on its own <laughs> to another lane that is free. Oh, you're yeah, not listening to me. This year, the remaining part of this year, will be your greatest period in 2022. And for some people, it will be their greatest group of months in their entire life. Once you put these principles that God put to work, in the recreation of the world. Hallelujah. Tuesday was awesome. A lot of you missed Tuesday service because you don't broadcast it online. We only have it in a closed group on Zoom. It was awesome. God's power and anointing was on me so much and we carried out some activities that I'm sure we yield fruits. <laughs> it has already said that you yield fruits. It will yield fruit that were bound to the glory of the Lord. Miracles upon miracles <laughs> will take place in our midst all to God's glory. Sweet Holy Spirit, I ask that you come, come and manifest yourself. You are the helper. Help me this evening to communicate your word as simple, as simple and clear so that everyone will grasp it. Come as the teacher to teach us these principles that you <laughs> put to work in the recreation of the world. As we are stepping into the month of new beginning, we can recreate our destiny in this remaining part of 2022. I thank you because I know you are here to help us, to teach us, to guide us, to speak to us, to unveil the truth of God. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> Mandeke Sotayaba. Yes, this God kind of faith is transmitted by speaking. It's also transmitted by action. Oh, glory be to God. See what the Bible says about the recreation of the world. 
Paul was writing into the Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 1. And he says something profound in verse 2. Hebrews 1 verse 2. Just turn your Bibles to that place. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says that God, who at various times has spoken in time past to the fathers by the prophets, verse 2, has in these days <laughs> spoken to us by his son. And John chapter 1 made it clear who his son was. Jesus himself said, I proceeded out of the Father. When you see that scripture in John chapter 6, he talked about it in chapter 8. He said, I proceeded out of the Father. Meaning he came out from the Father. How did he come out from the Father? He said, I have spoken to us this day by his Son. So in John chapter 1, John introduced Christ as the Word of God. As I'm speaking to you now, something is proceeding out of me. My words are proceeding out of me. <laughs> See, your words... <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, how we communicate this. See, the words that you speak are life. Your words are active. They are not dead. They are living. They are alive. We need to understand... <laughs> what these words that we speak are. They are not just mere words. They are part of your spirit. Your words are, a, are an, an extension of you. You and your words are one. If Jesus is the word of God and Jesus told us that he and his father are one, that means you and your words are one. That means the things you say you will become. <laughs> Glory be to God. The things you say, you will become. That is why the God kind of faith is released by words. The things you want to be, make sure you speak them. The things you want changed, make sure you speak them. Because it is through speaking them that you change lanes. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. <laughs> it is through speaking them that you change lanes. When you start speaking them, it's like turning on your blinkers, your trafficator, your indicator. You are now telling those around you in traffic, you are notifying them that you want to switch from your present lane to the right lane when you switch on the right indicator. That same way, when you start speaking words, you are notifying not just people physically around you, you are notifying the devils around you, you're notifying the angels around you that you're about to switch lanes. But the question is, what are you saying? <laughs> Listen to me. Your words are an indication of where you are going to. You didn't hear me. I said your words are an indication of where you are going to. That is why if I hang out, I if I hang around people and I listen to them, I can predict where they are going to. I can predict their future. Your future will not be different from what you are saying. Never think that your future will differ from your words. Your words and your future are the same. Your words and your future must align. In fact, your future is programmed by your words. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Thank you, sweet spirit. You're already in the house. <laughs> I don't know if you're listening to me. A popular preacher will say, am I communicating? <laughs> I need you to respond in the comment section. Am I communicating to you? <laughs> your future must align with your words. Your words are an indicator of the trajectory that is if you're moving forward and upwards or the decline <laughs> that your life will take. Your words indicate that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this, Paul was speaking here. And this is what he said. He said by his son, who is the word? The word is Jesus. And he said, this Jesus, whom he had appointed heir of all things, through whom, he made 
the words. The words. Not singular. <laughs> the words. In fact, the new telescope that was shot into space, you know, Hubble is now old and a cake. There's a new modern telescope that was shot into space. <laughs> and pictures recently were sent through that telescope. And they found out that there are different universes. In fact, the telescope could pick, I think, five different universes. <laughs> and I had a good laugh. My goodness. See, I don't need science to tell me that there are life, that there is life out there. I don't need science to tell me that the universe is so big that your mind cannot even fathom it. Why? The Bible tells me that about God. When you catch a tiny glimpse of God's size and magnitude, <laughs> you will know that this our planet, our solar system, is too small of an activity for God. God is so big, is so mighty, is so ah, that even there, if there are billions and billions of universes, it will still be too small for his mind to conceive. So there's life out there. <laughs> I know. I know. I know it for sure. I know it for sure because God is too big. He's too big. Anyway, now that you that um Telescope and is able to identify more universes. And the Bible tells us that all those things created by God, everything that is existing, is existing for and by Jesus Christ. The Bible says, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You and your Word is the same. And I cast my mind back to a recorded event, this time not creation, but recreation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, tells us that God created the heavens and the earth, and God does not create something that is bad. God does not create something that fails. Everything God creates is good and perfect. So if in verse 2, the Bible now tells us that there was darkness upon the surface of the deep, meaning the world was in a state of chaos, that means something must have happened to bring that chaos. So when God was recreating that world, some principles, some elements, some characters, we are on ground. <laughs> we are on ground. When we study the principles, the characters that we are on ground for the recreation, for the new beginning of the earth, and we put those things to work in our lives, we can create our new beginning. But before we get there, let's finish reading this place in Hebrews. Verse 3 now says, This word, which is his son, Jesus Christ, is the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. So we've seen God, we've seen the word, and he introduced a third element in the creation of the universes and the worlds. He called it his power. God the Father the author of everything, <laughs> the architect of everything. His word, <laughs> the designer of everything. Then his power, the executor of his word. Three elements. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us we are present for the creation of the whole universe. You see, science is trying now, there's this place called CERN in Switzerland, an European, you know, but I say 
Association of Scientists, fellow physicists, they are trying to recreate the Big Bang. They are trying to collide particles so they can identify how things came to be the source of all things. And they are doing it in an underground tunnel that is 26 kilometers long and it goes round in the circle, for instance, in the circle. So where they have this massive particle collider, where they are colliding particles so they can split the atom to the basic atom which they call, or basic element, I don't know all the technical words, forgive me if I'm not getting it right, but the basic element which they have now identified as the boson particle, which is also known as the God particle. Why they are trying to find the source of the universe. And they have thrown in, sinking in billions upon billions of dollars to achieve this. And yet the Bible tells us <laughs> how it was created. The source of all things. Because the Bible tells us clearly it is the word of God. Colossians tells us that for by him, talking about Jesus, who is the word, everything was... Oh, I like that scripture. Let me read it for you. Colossians. Talking about Jesus in verse 15 of Colossians chapter 1. He said he is the image of the invisible God. Sounds exactly what, like what we just read now in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He says the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creations. That means before God created an ant, <laughs> a, a speck of dust, Jesus was his first creation. Because remember, he proceeded out of God because nothing can be created without it being spoken. Oh, there's some scriptures if I touch. Ah, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. This is one of the scriptures. Let's read it again. Okay, Holy Spirit. So I should slow down. I should not be in a hurry. Let's read it again. He says, He is the image of the invincible God, the firstborn of all creation. Think about this. Jesus was first in line before creation. That means Jesus came first before creation. Why was it important for Jesus to come first before creation? Because everything created were created by him. And Jesus is the word. That means everything created, we are all created by God speaking it. So scientists are spending billions to find out how the Big Bang occurred, how creation came into being. And the Bible is telling us that creation came into being by God speaking it. That big bang actually happened. But how did it happen? By God speaking it. I want you to think carefully about this. God created us in his image. God created us in his likeness. That means if we also want to create, change our world, trafficate and move into another lane, start a new thing in our life, we must also deploy the things that God deployed when he wanted to change the trajectory of the earth, when he wanted to recreate the earth, when he wanted to rebrand the earth, when he wanted to renovate the earth, we should do the same thing. More so now, we're about to enter the month of new beginnings. If you want a new beginning in your life, deploy what God did. Speak, speak. Keep speaking, don't stop speaking. That's why in our prayer meetings, which are held every Wednesday and Friday, we prophesy, we speak. 
speak. We keep speaking so we can change our world. That miracle you are looking for will come to you by words, through words. Your words determine your future. You and your words are the same. If you don't like what is happening to you now, if you don't like how you look now, if you don't like the circumstances around you now, change what you are saying because the thing you don't like now is a product of what you said in the past. Are you not comfortable with it now? Do what? Change it! By what? Speaking. By speaking. So before... Let me read it again. The firstborn of all creation. Before creation, words came. Words, that is the word of God, preceded creation. Your words will precede your miracles. Your words will precede your healing. Your words will precede your breakthrough. It is time you wake up to this fact and start speaking it. Glory. Verse 16. I love this verse 16. This is where you always hear me say, for by him. He says, for by him. For, meaning the reason for something. You know, by, through, the means, the medium for something. So the reason for and the means through which that thing came is for one man. Listen to me. Let these two words ring in your mind, for and by. Listen carefully. For simply means the reason for something. Okay, <laughs> let's get, you know, dictionary definitions. According to the Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary, the word for means to, it, it is used to show who is intended to have or use something. The word by, according to the same Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary, means to show who or what does, creates, or causes something. The first one shows who it is intended for. The second one is who causes it. Who it is intended for and who causes it. Listen carefully. That's why I always say that you're your own prophet. You're your own miracle worker. Don't get me wrong. God is the one that will do it. But he can't do it alone. He needs you to partner with him so that he can do it. That's why Jesus said, with God. That means Pastor B and God. That means Elizabeth and God. That means David and God. That means Tobena and God. I mean, you must join and align with God for that thing to happen. For, by, Him, that miracle you are seeking, that breakthrough you are seeking, is going to come from God, but God needs you to align with Him so it will come to you. You are the four. That's what you, you are intended. And you also need to align with God so it will come through you. You are the one that will create it. Everything that you intend to come to you, you will create it. We need to stop practicing this Christianity that leaves everything to God. That leaves every responsibility to God. God doesn't want us to leave every responsibility to him. That is why he made us in his image. That is why he made us in his likeness. So we can take some of those responsibility of him. Of him. For by you listening to me, will your breakthrough come. 
For by you, listening to me, will your healing come. For by you, listening to me, will that life partner that you desire come. Arise and take charge of your life. That miracle that is delaying is your fault. You're the one delaying it. For by him, verse 16, we are all things created. Jesus created everything for himself. <laughs> so would you create your new beginning for yourself? So would you create those contracts you are looking for for yourself? So would you create that increasing number in your church for yourself? So would you create that healing for yourself? Walking alongside God. <laughs> for by him all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible or invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things not some things all things we are what created through is the medium <laughs> he's the medium through him and for him. So stop waiting on that pastor. Arise! <laughs> this is what pastors should be doing. Teaching the people who they are truly so they can wake up and take charge of their life. Letting them know and realize they, that they are the giants. They are the giants. They are the real principality that should be terrorizing devils, <laughs> demons that show up around them. This is what it, the church of the Lord should be doing. Teaching the church so they can grow and arise to the full stature of Christ, which they truly are. Which they truly are. They always say that the husband and the wife are one. If Jesus truly is our groom and we are his bride, we should be one. That means the way Jesus operates is the way we should operate. If he needs anything, he creates it. If you need anything, you create it. You create it. So we've seen the Father, which when we are aligned with, nothing becomes impossible. And how do we do it? By the words, and the word is his son. And Hebrews tells us about the power that was also present in the recreation of the world. Now, when you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and you read verse 2, the Bible says the earth was without form. The earth was void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Bible talked about something else, the third element. <laughs> and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That is the power of God. That is the executor, executor of the word. That is why Jesus was telling his disciples in John chapter 14 and in John chapter 16 about the Holy Spirit. Can read those two chapters, 14, 15, and 16, and even 17, when he was praying for them. He talked about the Holy Spirit. He says, see, that the Holy Spirit will take that which is his and show it to them. That means the Holy Spirit will not communicate or do anything that is outside the world. Why? Right? The job of the Holy Spirit is to take the word and execute it. Is to take the word and put it into action. Why? He is the power of God. He is the omnipotence of God. He is the executor of the word. But that power of God does not go to work without it being spoken. It is the word that turns on the power. <laughs> the way you go switch on your generator, the way you go to the uh, main switch box of this house and turn on the switch the power on. How you turn on God's power is by speaking. 
the word of God. It's by speaking the word of God. That is how the earth was recreated. God the Father conceived how he wanted earth to be. He spoke it. The Spirit took the word and brought it to pass. <laughs> That's exactly what Paul was telling us in Hebrews chapter 1. He said that everything that was created was created by the word. Not only was it created by the word, it is also sustained by the word and the power of God. The earth has no foundations and yet it is standing in space. This massive ball of earth that weighs trillions upon trillions of tons. How is it hanging in space? You know, God speaking to Job said, where were you when he laid the foundations of the earth? <laughs> so that means the earth has foundations. They are not physical. The foundation of the earth is the word of God. The foundation of the earth is the energized <laughs> word of God. The word of God that is backed and laced with power, that is what is holding up the earth. That is the foundation of the earth. It is invincible, yet it is holding up something visible. Holding up something visible. As we step into this new month of new beginning, this is exactly how you change your lot. This is exactly how you change circumstances around you. That's how you, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Majesos fatata. Repaha baba akana. John dolobo sakata. So we've seen the three principles of creation. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. But there was something Moses did not include in Genesis that Paul spoke about in Hebrews. He spoke about it in Hebrews, but not Hebrews chapter 1. He spoke about it in Hebrews chapter 11. And this is where we will end. He spoke about it in Hebrews chapter 11. Glory be to God. Verse 3, Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, we understand that the words, you see that, those words again that you saw in chapter 1, verse 3. Words. We are framed by what? The word of God. That means it is God's word that created everything. Not just earth. Not just the Milky Way solar system, but the universes that upon universes upon universes that are currently in existence. It is the word that created it, like we saw in Colossians. So that the things which are seen, we are not made by things which are visible. It is still the intangibility that created the tangible. It is still the invisible that created the visible. What is this intangible? What is this invisible? It's talking about words. The faith of God is deployed through words. So what is the fourth element? By faith. Listen to me. You, even though you have the three principles, if you remove faith, nothing works. A lot of people have been speaking. Like, I've been talking to them. People like, listening to me, like, but pastor, I've been confessing, I've been talking, I've been talking. How come I've not seen a change? And I'll say to you, where is your faith? It is your faith that makes your words work. Without faith, your words are dead. Without actions, that correspond with the words you're speaking, your faith is dead. That is the fourth element. It is faith that powers your words. It is faith that energizes the Holy... Rather, it is faith that activates the Holy Spirit 
to energize your words, which when angels hear it spoken, will move into action to bring your miracles to you. It's faith. That is why faith is the master key. To create a new beginning for yourself this year, it is faith that will do it. I always tell people, don't be in a hurry to, to speak. Don't be in a hurry to confess. Be in a hurry to believe. Before you start confessing and prophesying, believe first. Jesus speaking to his disciples said, when you stand praying, believe first. He told them, don't be in a hurry to confess. Don't be in a hurry to pray. Start with believing. Believe. And how do you believe? By hearing and hearing the word of God. Hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. As I close, I've not looked at my notes at all. I mean, look at my notes. <laughs> Glory be to God. By hearing and hearing the word of God. That is where you start from. Glory be to God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth. And in your heart. That is. The word of faith. Which we preach. It is where? It is near you. It is in your mouth. I have said this several times and I will not stop saying it because I know how it affected me. I know how it, you know, stole from me. I know how it limited me in my early days as a Christian. Nobody ever taught me about words. Nobody ever taught me about prophesying. I was a believer that was dumb because I failed to realize that the course of my life will be in line with the course of my mouth. Time will fail me to get into James. I don't know if I have time for that. Into James. Your words are important. Your mouth is... Please go read James chapter 3. The Bible talked about how important your tongue is to your life. He said, this small member of your body, very small, <laughs> can set on fire your destiny, can set on fire your future. If your tongue can set on fire, mean destroy your future, your tongue can also build it up. That is how powerful your words are. Small member, but it was used synonymously with the reins on the horse. He says how you put bits in the mouth of a, of, of, of a horse so that the rider can direct it whithersoever he wants the horse to go. He says how you put a rudder at the tail end of the ship, bottom end of the ship so that you can use it to direct when you turn the, ro the, the, the rudder in the, I don't know what it's called, it's the cockpit. That little thing at the helm of this of the ship determines the direction that big ship turns to. He said, so is your tongue. Wherever your life is headed to now is a result of what you've been saying. You don't like the direction it's going, change what you're saying. Change it. Change it. If you don't like it, change it. Change it. Say so the word is near you. Say so it's in your mouth. It's in your heart. Say so that is the word of faith which we preach. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6 verse 2 says that you are snared by the words of your mouth. Say so you are taken by the words of your mouth. There's a translation that says that you are held captive. At times we are breaking and losing and destroying chains, holding us. In our minds, we are destroying and binding devils. But little do we know that those chains, we are put by the words that we spoke. So we should actually be binding our mouth. 
we should be binding our tongue because we put ourselves in chains. And so the Bible says to Israel, O Israel, thou, you, Israel, not Satan, but you have destroyed yourself. I put that here, you said you don't have faith. And immediately you said, oh, I don't have faith. Oh, my faith is weak. Oh, my faith is strong. See, immediately it left your lips. Doubt took over. Unbelief took over. You created it by what you said. They say thoughts will die a natural death if you don't voice it out. Listen to me. I don't care the thoughts of failures that you have. I don't care the thoughts of sickness that you have. I don't care the thoughts of death that you have. Once you don't verbalize it, it will die a natural death. Why Satan bombards your thoughts, your mind with evil, with negativity? It's the soul who can voice it. See, the power, the power to move your life is in your mouth. Don't use it to bring destruction to yourself. Don't use it to bring death to you. Instead, use it to bring life. The Bible says, the man's belly shall be satisfied by the fruits of his lips. What are you speaking? God doesn't create something that will fail. The pastor, there are people on the earth already failures. Is because when they were born, they were born with their old nature because of Adam. Even those born with their old nature can still make their life successful. The billionaires of this world still have their old nature. They are not believers, yet they are successful. It's because they have a different mindset. They understand that what they say affects them. They have other principles of nature that they are living their lives by, that is guiding them, and those natural principles are bringing the results that they want. So the fallen man can still be successful. It is a proof that God does not create failure. But if you are born again, you are now born of God. And everything born of God can not fail. Except that thing born of God chooses to fail by the things he or she is saying. By the things he or she is doing. So the failure or the success you have experienced in the past or you might experience in the future is within your control. It is in your hands. Being a Christian is an added advantage because you're no longer the natural man you now have God on your inside. <laughs> everything man makes fails, but everything God makes does not fail. You are made by God. You are born of God, you little children. And the Bible says, you have overcome the world. So you can't fail. Start putting these principles I'm teaching you to work. So you can walk into your success, into your victory, into your breakthrough into new heights, into new beginnings. You can change the trajectory that your life is currently on if you don't like it. Choose to change it. The choice is yours. The power is in your hands. Failures are man-made. They are made by wrong believing and wrong thinking. As a born-again Christian, you are not man-made. You are God-made. Therefore, you cannot fail. I love this. Failures are man-made. Why? It is created by wrong believing and wrong thinking and wrong speaking. But you are God-made. <laughs> you are born again. Everything that comes from God, everything that God creates does not fail. Yes. You cannot fail. You are a success. Start believing it and start putting that belief to work. And you see your life change. Huh? 
you will start experiencing new beginning. Huh? This August, September, October, November, and December will be awesome five months of grace where you will experience the grace of God in its multiplicity. It will come to you. Huh? It will be delivered to you. Huh? You will enjoy it huh? because you will believe it and you will speak it to pass in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Glory, glory be to God. <laughs> God created the universe with words. Words filled with faith are the most powerful things in the whole world. That is the truth. The key to the God kind of faith is believing with the heart and confessing with your mouth. If you don't confess it, if you don't prophesy it, the God kind of faith, though it is, it is chambered in you, will be dormant. That powerful equipment will not run, will not help you, will not add value to your life till you speak it, till you act on it. Our lips can make us millionaires or keep us paupers. Our lips can make us victors or keep us captives. Our faith will never rise above the words of our lips. This is so true. No matter how much faith you think you have, it will never arise. It will never deliver what you are not saying. It will only deliver the things that you are saying. This is so true. Hallelujah. This is so true. That is why Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood. He said to her, your faith has made you whole. He said to the Syrophician woman, I have not seen this kind of faith. He said, go. Your daughter is whole. The same thing says to the centurion, which I talked talk to you about last Tuesday. You know, he said, I've never seen this great faith. And the Bible says that why they were still there. Hey. Servants from the centurion's house came and met them and told the centurion, Don't worry, the master, <laughs> your servant has been healed. Uh -uh. Is it not worry, the master, your servant has been healed? What healed the servant? The faith of the centurion. The faith of the century. Your faith has made the whole. Several examples of that in the Bible. Where Jesus told them that it is their faith that made them whole. So cultivate the habit of thinking big things. Learn to use words that will react upon your spirit. Faith confessions creates realities. Realization follows the confession. The confession precedes the possession. Shows you the link, <laughs> the link of what you want to see or possess to your speaking it and to faith. The God kind of faith is deployed by speaking. The God kind of faith is deployed by action. Then you will receive it. When you come praying, believe that you've received it. Then you will have it. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm ending now. Glory be to God. Second Corinthians 4 verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed. Therefore, I spoke. We believe. Therefore, speak. Speak. Show me your faith by speaking. Show me your faith by your action. You cannot have faith if you are not speaking. You cannot have faith if you are not acting. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, thank you for your word. I worship and adore you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Tattoo your words on the fleshy parts of our hearts this night. May you never leave. <laughs> May you never leave. I give you praise and I worship you. Because I know a change is coming. I know we are growing, maturing, developing into the full stature of Christ as we behold the world, as we behold the world. Uh, change us, translate us, transform us 
into that image of your dear son. Thank you, Lord. Name of Jesus, we have prayed. Huh? Um, man, if you've got an offering, this is the time to give it. Father, bless the givers. Bless the givers. They are giving. Huh? It's an action of faith. Huh? Because they look at what they have. Huh? And they think of the problems that they have. Huh? But they still go and give. Huh? Let their faith in giving never fail, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Huh? Let their giving be a point of contact. Huh? Upon which they will receive everything that they trust you for everything that they believe you for in the name of jesus may their faith that is seen by giving may their faith that is seen by paying their tithe never ever fail it must produce in jesus name i pray amen and amen join me on sunday it's going to be awesome this sunday it's going to be great we are getting to another level we're going to look at the third kind of faith this sunday probably glory be to god this promises to be awesome and insightful and enlightening then we'll move over to another sub-series i'm enjoying this faith series <laughs> glory be to god by the time i done with this faith series i feel a nudge holy spirit or let's see changes the trajectory to go back to ephesians remember we've done ephesians chapter one we've done chapter two we're going to hit chapter three hard it's going to be exciting, maybe at the tail end of this year. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. Maybe we might restrict it to just Tuesdays. Who knows? I'll wait for an instruction from the Holy Spirit, like you know. I always do what He asks me to do. Glory be to God. So see you on Sunday, but before then, Wednesday, prayer meeting tomorrow. Friday, prayer meeting. Don't miss it for anything. Go succeed, go prosper, for God is with you. Amen.